Well, hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I'll implement video calling feature in a Flutter app. We'll be using a tool built by the company called Agora. So instead of the browser, I'll write agora.io and it takes us to this page. The first thing that you have to do is simply sign up and register your app to get an app ID. So I'm going to click on the sign up button and it takes me to this portal. And there's nothing complicated here. If you're new, then simply click on the sign up button. Since I'm registered, therefore, I'm going to click on this login button to log into my account. And there we go. Now, this is what an Agora dashboard looks like. And I already have a project registered over here. To register a new project, you would simply have to click on the new project button. Then provide a name for the project and submit. When you create a project for the first time, it might give you some extra options. Just select options based on your choice because none of that matters for the purpose of this video tutorial. The only thing that we would need is an app ID. Alright, so once your project has been created, just click on the edit button and it will show you your app ID. That's all we need to do from the Agora dashboard. Now I'm going to come inside of my newly created project and instead of the puffspec.yaml, I'll write Agora RDC engine and I'll also import permission handler and then I'll sync it. Alright. Also, remember that the code that you're going to see on this video is completely built and maintained by Agora IO community. The link to their repository is present in the description below. So I will come to the browser and then I will paste this link. And the link takes us to the Agora Flutter Quick Start repository. Then I will simply download the repository as a zip. Okay, so once it's downloaded, I will open the zip file and on the other window, I have the lib folder from the project repository. So first, I will delete main.dart from here and then I will paste all the contents from zip file to the lib folder of the repository. Great! Now we only need one single thing, which is the app ID. So I'll go back to the dashboard and I will copy this app ID. Now where should we paste this ID? Well, you would need to go to src, utils, and then open up the settings.dart. And then I will pass the app ID over here. And that's it. It's that simple. Now I'll run the app. When you run it for the first time, it takes a bit longer than usual. Okay, so on the screen, you can see that I have two devices. So if I type a channel name and click on this button, it first asks for permission. And once you grant the necessary permission, it takes you to another screen and accesses the front camera by default. Then on the other device, I will type in the same channel name and I will tap on this button. And there you go. The screens on both the devices are divided in two equal parts and the video calling has started. Now I have flipped to back cameras in both devices and I will bring this device in front of the other one and move this drawer. Now remember that the top portion of the first part of the device screen shows you what your camera sees, what your device camera sees. Whereas the bottom portion actually contains the streamed view which means the video that is being streamed live. And that's why the bottom portion seems a little bit more laggy than the first portion. Now I'll click on this red button to leave the channel. And there we go. The divided screen is not divided anymore. Now I'll click on the red button from this device as well. And that's it. Great. Now let's take a look at the code and see what's going on under the hood. So instead of the main.dart, we simply have a material app, which takes a title and a theme and its home is set to index page. Index page is just a stateful widget. And this is the first page that you see as soon as the app loads. So at the top here, we have two variables, namely channel controller, which is responsible for retrieving the text from the text field. And then we have validate error, which is responsible for tracking any error that could occur. Then instead of the dispose method, we simply dispose the channel controller. And instead of the build method, we have a scaffold, an app bar. And uh, over here, we have the text field and we assign it a controller and check for some errors. It's just a simple UI. Now let's see what happens when we click on the join button. So an on join method is called. Then instead of the on join method, we first check whether the text field is empty. If it is empty, then we set the validate error to true or else we set it to false. And if the text field is not empty, then we come inside of this if block and we call handle camera and mic, which is an asynchronous method. And that's why we marked on join as an asynchronous method as well. Handle camera and mic method is responsible for getting the necessary permissions from the user and once the user grants the permission, we move on to the next screen called call page and we pass the channel name to the call page. Then instead of the call page, we receive the channel name. 
Then inside of the call page state, we have a list of video sessions called sessions. And after that, we have a variable called info string, which is an empty list of strings. And there is a boolean variable as well called muted and it is set to false. After that, we have a dispose method which is called automatically whenever the screen is closed to free any resources that were used. So we clear all the sessions and call leave channel method from the Agora library. And in the init state, we check if the app ID is empty. If it is not empty, then we move on to init Agora RTC engine method, which is responsible for creating Agora SDK instance and initializing it. Then there is add Agora event handlers, which is simply responsible for defining some basic callbacks and event handlers like if there's an error or if user joins a code or leaves the channel and so on. After that, we have an add render view method which is responsible for creating a native view and adding a video session. And the native view which is created returns a view ID back to us, which is then utilized to set up a local video view and then start preview method to starts the preview of the local view. Now here comes the most important method. You might be wondering that how does a user join a channel? So basically we specify the name of the channel and the Agora SDK creates a channel with that name and starts adding users to it. So when another user enters a name for a channel, it is first checked that whether a channel by a specified name already exists or not. And if it does, then both the users are joined together in the same session. Once the user joins a channel, the user receives the on channel joint callback function and the other users in the same channel receive on-channel user joined callback function. And if the user fails to join a specified channel, the user receives an on-channel join failed callback. That's it. The video call screen that you see over here is completely customizable. So if we come inside of the build method, we simply have an app bar, a body, and then the body takes the center widget, which then takes a stack. And then inside of the stack, we have three widgets, namely view rows, which contains widgets that stream the video, then the panel and then the bottom toolbar. If you go into view rows, you'll notice that the views adjust based on the number of users currently present inside of a channel. And it is all decided using a switch case present over here. So if there's a single user, then there's a single video view. And if there are multiple users, then the number of video view widgets also increases to accommodate all the users in a single screen. All right, so you can see that all this is highly customizable and really easy to implement. But still, it's not very practical. For example, if you wanted to video call someone, you wouldn't ask them to enter a specific channel ID so that the video call can commence. You'd rather want to simply call the person. So ideally, the channel name should be decided programmatically. For example, if a person A tries to contact person B, then a random ID should be generated for the channel name and should be passed to our Agora RTC engine. And then if the person B picks the call, then the same ID should be passed as a channel ID for person B as well. Of course, you would need a backend service to pass the channel ID generated at one end to the other end. If you're interested in that and you want me to make a tutorial on that as well, then tell me in the comments below. Uh, maybe I'll make a video calling app clone or something. All right, so that's it for this video. Hope you learned something exciting today. The Agora community is amazing as they've just made it so much easier to implement a task as complex as video calling in Flutter by providing this demo application. If you're new here, then make sure to hit that subscribe button as I am constantly working on bringing more awesome Flutter content. Also, make sure to like and comment on the video. I love reading and replying to the amazing comments and feedbacks that you guys leave on my videos. So, till next time.